before watching the video don't forget to subscribe the channel and enable bell notification to never miss an update from us hello everyone and good morning this is ashma shukla and you're watching us on entry channel and uh, this is a video of current affairs that is in this video we're going to talk about daily news events those being only the ones which are important from the examination perspective the news events that we're going to cover is basically from 15th and 14th of november as of more of it and the news events are going to be divided into two parts or the video is going to be divided into two parts one being the descriptive segment one being the one liner segment right so we'll be moving ahead with our discussion the first news event being operation thunder now operation thunder is basically a wildlife uh, kind of wildlife protection operation which basically works for uh, or basically has an objective of keeping the wildlife illegal trade into uh, you know control so this is conducted by interpol and world customs organization both of them conduct them together and as of now it's been conducted in 103 countries all together right now uh, this operation thunder was the one which began in 2017 and this year it was held from 14th of september to 11th of october 2020 and uh, it has also caused a lot of arrests in india because india is also a place which has a lot of wildlife and is very rich in that so there have been seizures or you know uh, seizing of a lot of material of sandal for sandalwood animals ivory pangolin scales pangolins timber marine products and plants these are the few segments which have been recovered from the side of india itself now as per interpol wildlife and forestry crime is the fourth largest illegal trade in the world after corruption money laundering and tax evasion these are the three primary ones and after that the fourth comes forestry crime and illegal trade of forestry products uh is this the only project that is running by interpol for uh, wildlife no there are other projects also which interpol runs uh, with the perspective of wildlife protection so what are those projects first one being project predator first is project predator right and that is basically it was started in 2010 and is basically aimed at uh, cats and other wildlife the second one being project wisdom wisdom is for elephants and rhinoceroses right third one being uh, project thunderbird which began in 2017 as we have seen over here and it protects the illegal trade in all the wildlife and timber then we have worthy 2 worthy 2 jo hai this worthy 2 is basically for trafficking in africa it controls the trafficking of africa overlooks that and it was started in 2015 then we have a project pause this pause project is basically for protection of asian wildlife species and was implemented in 2015 right so these are the uh, major uh, projects which are all of interpol and all of these are these are run by interpol and uh, headquarters of interpol are in lyon in france because they may ask you this as well next being mission covid suraksha now this has been started by the finance ministry so what is in this mission covid suraksha it is it was announced by finance minister nirmala sitaraman and according to that government of india has allocated 900 crores for research and development of covid 19 vaccines as of now there are three vaccines that are under trial in india plus it is a sputnik 5 which is conducting its uh, one phased trials over here now why one phased trials i say because uh, the trials were basically running in russia it's a russian vaccine not indian so uh, the trials were running there but there were less number of people which were covered in that so it has been raised towards india also the three vaccines that are under trial in india are covaxin then we have a covi shield covaxin covi shield and then we have zycovid 
तो कोवैक्सिन इज ऑफ आईसीएमआर कोविशील्ड इज ऑफ ऑक्सफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी एंड सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट एंड जाइकोवीडी इज ऑफ जाइडस कैडेला नाउ अबाउट दीज थ्री वैक्सीन नाउ इज दिस फंड कवरिंग द एवरीथिंग ऑफ इट नो ओनली द रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट कॉस्ट एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज सेपरेटली एंड दैट इज अंडर सेपरेट फंड बट फॉर रिसर्च एलोकेशन ऑफ मनी इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड दैट इज बींग डन बाय Uh, under this fund which has been proposed right next 11th annual pneumonia and diarrhea progress report was recently released on the world pneumonia day that is on 12th of november so 12th of november is world pneumonia day on this day this report was released and according to the first of all who released this report so it was released by international vaccine International Vaccine Access Center (IVAC). They have released this report, and according to this report, India has made a various or significant progress in this. So, what have been the key findings of it? <clears throat> there are five vaccines which are there. That being DPT, measles, PCV, rotavirus, Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine. DPT is for diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus, and PCV is pneumonial conjugate vaccine. Now, India has covered ninety percent of three of these five vaccines. So, out of these five vaccines, three vaccines coverage has been good by India, and that has reached a level of ninety percent. Apart from that, hundred-day agenda of Unprecedented national scale rotavirus vaccine has also been reached by India. So that is also major progress made by India. Now, according to the report, rotavirus vaccine coverage has increased from thirty-five to fifty-three. Just the opposite, thirty-five to fifty-three, and PCV has increased from six to fifteen percent. Uh, all right there have been 15 co countries that were covered under this report so this report was basically studying 15 countries and out of the uh, out of all of them india is one of the four that exceeds the target of exclusive breastfeeding in breastfeeding india has made significant progress making it one of the four countries that have exclusive breastfeeding projects or uh, places right Uh, apart from that, UP and MP are estimated to have majority of pneumonia cases in India. That is in India also. If we talk about states, UP and MP have major cases of pneumonia, especially of those which are under the age of five. So it is MP and UP, right? Moving ahead to the next news event, that is maritime cluster. Now, what about maritime cluster? First of all, we'll talk about what is maritime cluster. It's basically assembly of business firms, institutions in the maritime uh, sector, which are in the close proximity or which are located close to each other, so that they all can act as a single unit. Uh, all of them, like business firms, institutions, all of them can do their work and act as a single unit, so that it acts as a Uh, you know, it's a big organization. It's kind of a big organization. Is this new concept in India? No, it has been running in Singapore, Rotterdam, Oslo, Hong Kong, London, London, Shanghai. All of these countries have been running this project as of now, and they have been running it quite successfully, as if we must say. Uh, what is the thing about India recently? First of all, uh, Ropax ferry service was started in Gujarat, as you must have seen. Ropax. ferry service was started in gujarat uh, on the gulf of cambay if you remember it was two to three videos back now there is a unique maritime cluster that is going to be set up in the gift city of gujarat so uh, why is this needed see uh, there are various uh, companies which work towards maritime business but they are not uh, working in india like adani ports Uh, it is a company which works on cargo and shipments and ports, but it's not working in India. They have based themselves into Emirates Maritime or Dubai Maritime cluster. Why? Because India does not give them the ecosystem. So, for giving them the ecosystem, so that we have first of all the brain of India remains in India, the projects of India remain in India, and the best of India remains in India. That is the idea why this has been put up. Apart from that, alternate dispute resolution. of india for the first time is going to be set up under gujarat maritime university this is for the first time that alternate dispute resolution center will be set up in india right so indian players can remain in india is the primary concept 
Then we have PM Kusum scheme. Now PM Kusum scheme, you have been listening for I guess two to three times now. And recently there was a new target which was set up. Right, if you people remember, there was a new target which was set up for PM Kusum. Now the change has been that certain amendments have been made by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy on the three components of the scheme. What is PM Kusum? Pradhan Mantri Kisan Urja Suraksha Eva Muthan Maha Uthan Maha Bhiyan, which works towards increment of solar panels and solar plants. So uh, there are three, uh, you can say, components of the scheme. Component A for installation of decentralized grid connected renewable power plants. B is for standalone power projects and C is for uh, grid connected agriculture farms. So what have been the amendments in all of these? First of all, in component A, if we have a look at in component A, uh, pasture lands have been included, then size of solar plants have increased, the completion of plants has been increased from 9 to 12 months, and penalty has been reduced. 9 to 12 months it has been increased, no penalty for uh, less production than anticipated, then pasture lands have also been included. Right. Then we have component B. Component B is going to work towards uh, information, education and communication activities charge 33% is going to be there. Right. And uh, uh, all those who are eligible, that eligibility has been amended and guidelines have been amended for setting up then a capacity of solar panels which are higher than 7.5 watts power they can also be installed that is big solar plants can also be installed next wing component c in this also 33 percent has been made on the same basis and apart from that Mm, apart from that, there is an agreement which was signed by IREDA, Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency, with Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. If you people remember, the target we were talking about, the target improvisation or increase that has happened for 2022, for that this um, agreement has been signed. Right? Moving ahead, world's largest China banked deal has come into force in RCEP, which was left RCEP, which was left by India last year itself. Last year we had India had left RCEP, that is a free trade agreement, and now China, along with 14 other countries who agreed to that free agreement, they are going to set up the world's largest trading bloc. This is something similar to United States, Mexico, Canada agreement, UCMCA. Uh, on the similar lines, that is free trade agreement between these 15 countries. Right. So, idea is to bring these 15 Asian economies closer and it is for the first time that first of all China and Japan have reached a bilateral tariff reduction agreement uh, arrangement and second is China, South Korea and Japan, all the three in a single free trade agreement. That is something which was seen for the first time. Right. It does not have any specification of labor or labor guidelines, nothing of such. Then a few one-liners, China has launched the first 6G experimental satellite, which is of tetrahertz waves technology. Then World Health Organization has announced to set up traditional medicine centers in India on National uh, Ayurveda Day. So National Ayurveda Day was observed recently and on that occasion, World Health Organization has decided to uh, set up a traditional medicine centers in India. Right now, what is what is going to be there? So these will support the efforts of World Health Organization on implementation of traditional medicines 1415 strategy. Right now, uh, when is National Ayurveda Day? It is on Dhanteras. Why it is on Dhanteras? Because Dhanteras is on Dhanvantri. Jayanti and Dhanvantri is the goddess of Hindu god of medicines, right? So it can be asked from you that who is the Hindu god of medicines? That is Dhanvantri. What is celebrated on the occasion of Dhanvantri uh, Jayanti? That is Dhanteras. Now, Institute of Teaching and Research in Ayurveda will be set up in Jamnagar and it will be an institute of national importance. 
second institute it's the same part right second is national institute of ayurveda that will be set up in jaipur and it is going to be institution deemed to be a university right so there are two institutes that are going to be set up one institute of teaching and research one national institute of ayurveda next national ayurveda day dhanvantri jayanti and the theme for this time was ayurveda for covid 19 Similarly, uh, World Diabetes Day, 14th of November, to may with the theme nurses make the difference for diabetes. 14th November is also Children's Day. Children's Day in India, right? Then India is announced to uh, contribute to Asian Response Fund, and that is one million US dollars are going to be uh, contributed by India towards Asian Response Fund. Now, what is Asia? Asia is Association of Southeast Asian Countries, and it has total of ten members as its, and there are other observer nations. India is not a member of ASEAN. India is an observer. China is also an observer. Japan is also an observer. South Korea is also an observer. So that uh, agreement which we had talked about a few minutes back, that was about ASEAN itself. Then India has test fired a quick re uh, reaction surface to air missile at Chandipur test fire range, which is by the name QRSAM, and it's a canister based system, right? Then Ayodhya's Deepotsav has reached the Guinness World Records. Where was it done? On the banks of Saryu River. So it's important to know that the world record was made by the Deepotsav of Ayodhya. On which banks it was there? It can be asked. So that is River Saryu, and they can ask you that which river flows from Ayodhya. That is also Saryu. Right. Then Enforcement Directorate Chief Sanjay Kumar Mishra has got one year extension, so they can ask you who is the Enforcement Directorate Chief. That is Sanjay Kumar Mishra. Saadat Rahman of Bangladesh has been given International Children's Peace Prize, and the Promised Land is a book which is written by President Barack Obama, and it is going to be released recently, so that is important. Then Khelo India scheme has been launched with 500 private academies, which are to be funded in the 12 games which have been identified, and those 12 games are with the view of olympics or that is those games which uh, or events which are important from the point of our olympics right so with this our session winds up over here thank you so much do hit the like button share the video comment on how much you like it and if you have any doubt that can also be comment you can put them in the comment and they will be looked after by me in the comment itself right so thank you so much See you in the next video until then good luck with until then good luck with your preparations and have a great day ahead